So, we at the Lotus Caesars are often accused of hating women. Are we? Well, according by the feminists on Twitter and sometimes in our YouTube comment oh. section. Jesus Hello. Christ, they, they accuse everyone of hating women. Well, do you hate women, Carl? Not every day. <laughs> well, I personally don't hate women, if anything. Um, <laughs> I've been guilty of liking them a little bit too much in my past. But if you'd like to know what a woman is, you can go and sign up to our website and see Carl and Harry discussing Matt Walsh's What is a Woman? Because it's best that you define one before you fancy one. Just before we go on from this, I think what the, the reason that this, I think, is a useful podcast is because we're not just reviewing uh, Matt Walsh's documentary. Uh, it's a good documentary, by the way. It's worth your time. Um, but what Matt does, and very cleverly, is actually just get them to explain themselves. And so he doesn't do any unpacking of what it is that they've done. And so we've done that on the, uh, on, on the sort of, you know, in the aftermath of it, is just go through exactly what, what does all of this mean when they give you their postmodern mumbo jumbo. Uh, and that's what we do in this, and so I think it's really worth your time. Hmm. And keep your eyes peeled for the website for when one day an article shall appear that tells you what a woman should be. Yeah, I'm working on a sort of uh, a thick concept of what a woman is. Uh, and what's interesting, a quick spoiler for this one as well, is that it's actually given me a new dimension on understanding transgenderism. Hmm. But uh, I'll I'll save that for later. Go and sign up to the website for that. Unfortunately, the feminists don't agree with us, and they don't particularly seem to like women because they want to abolish beauty standards and make them miserable and alone for the rest of their lives. And I think we should go through some recent articles yeah, that really just, illustrate that. Just a quick thing, yeah, they, they call me a misogynist, and they're like, yes, yeah, so we need to abolish women. It's like, okay, I'm not trying to abolish women. Hmm. Like, my God, you know, apparently, you know, if I... If, it, 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 how is that not hating women? Hmm. Come on. We're on your side. Now be fat, hairy, and unhappy. So... Also, this, you don't exist. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Well, speaking of self-definition, this article any of the caused, things uh, you like exist. You don't have any sports, your bathrooms, women's clubs, gyms. None of these things exist. That's right. We're pro woman. <laughs> God, <laughs> sorry, sorry, it's sorry. Right. It's just, it's just, it's more ridiculous the more you say it. Yeah, right? well, the patriarchy never existed, but it should have. So this one caused quite a stir, and I saw quite a few people covering it. Oh. But um, it's arguing that hotness is not an objective parameter, nor is it governed by men but instead it's a self-identity. So I'm going to read something here. <laughs> Mrs. Esteem is one of many who are expanding the definition of hotness, taking it beyond its former association of old notions of attractiveness. These days, being hot no longer pertains only to your physical appearance, but includes how you move through the world, how you see yourself. Many of those pushing for a broader understanding of the term are also pushing back against the idea that you need to wait for confirmation from someone else before feeling justified in calling yourself hot. To them, hotness is a self-declaration, and that's that. Hotness is no longer just in the eye of the beholder. It's a mood. It's a vibe. And this reminds me of when the UN said that women are timeless, formless, mm. an eldritch god. It's basically an effort to decouple standards of attractiveness from any social consideration. And so it's an act of both narcissism and a nihilistic abandonment of self-improvement. So this that's exactly right. But what's very interesting to me about this is that the, the concept, you know, to call someone hot is to say... I'm having an aesthetic experience, which is I feel attraction to you mm. because of your various characteristics. And that's something that happens in your head. You can't unilaterally declare yourself to be hot. Uh, that'd be like, you know, some sort of autogynephilia, sort of, you know, auto eroticism that comes out of it. It's like, okay, but that doesn't make you hot. That means you're just, you know, narcissistic, as yeah, you say. It's masturbatory. And there's also the the strange way of using hotness as a word, and we'll go on to another bit but, in a but bit. That... They are they are right to say that it's not an objective term. It is, of yeah. course, subjective, but it happens in other people's heads. It literally definitionally can't happen in your own. There there are some objective metrics like symmetry, health, and fertility, for example, but there are also commonalities that most men like. They like shapeliness, they like a nice hip to waist ratio, they like um uh, not being hairy or smelly, which is a low bar, but unfortunately most of but the protesters this is, don't this do this. Is where they'll attack you and say, Yeah, but uh the subjective nature of the you know, quote what you find hot is literally what you find hot. And so if you've got, uh, if you're the sort of person who has like a particular fetish for one of the things that you've said, well, people don't find that hot, then there will be guys who find that hot. And so it's, you know, that that's how they'll attack that position, right? They'll say, well, you're speaking generalizations. And it's not un un unfair to speak in generalizations, but it also means that literally being hot, again, it it is taken away from the person and put into the perceiver, Mm. that that's where being hot comes from which is why they're like well i mean you don't need justification or you know, confirmation from someone else it's like actually you do that's how you get it 
Yeah, and the, mm. the, the hotness culture, and uh, Chris Williamson spoken specifically about this distinction, hot and beauty seem to be incompatible these days. Because if mm. you look at Love Island, for example, which he mm. went on, hotness is paraded as a sort of titillating but always on display sexual overload. Mm. Whereas beauty is uh, uh, more, it's a less fleshy, less often seen conduit to to something that's a bit higher order good. I'm not sure if I'm explaining it perfectly, but it reminds me of what Keats said, you know, truth is, truth is beauty, beauty is truth, and that is all you need to know on earth. Mm. And so the, the womanliness is stripped, first of all, and then now almost the sexual aspect of being considered sexually attractive by someone else is stripped. And so you've, you've got the validation, but you've hit none of the criteria. And that's why it's at once mm. nihilistic and narcissistic. Yeah, there's, no, there's none of the, the, the virtue, right? No. It's not graceful... It's not uh, ephemeral or anything like this. It's, like you say, very sordid and real and fleshy is a good way of describing it. Mm. Um, so there's not one thing that defines what hot is. Our definition of attraction and attractiveness has expanded so much, as you presaged. Apparently, many of the words and phrases that become common in online discourse, including hot, on fleek, and kiki... God knows what they mean, are rooted in BIPOC and queer communities. Over time, they've been co-opted and come to seen as elements of TikTok speak, a phenomenon referred to as semantic bleaching. Let's not talk about the bleaching done by the LGBT community, otherwise we'll be taken off YouTube. You don't have to ask permission to be hot online, Miss Sundberg said. You can take up space and perform and create your own power dynamics between yourself and your audience. I think being hot online is sort of pure and debatably what social media is for. And I think that is the most revelatory quote. That's amazing. It's this progressive postmodern paradox mm. of saying i self-define myself of hot and have no standards but at the same time you have a concept of hotness as a simp and i'm going to lord that over you and use it as a particular uh, tool for achieving political power and to call it pure as well is very interesting mm. as in, this is unsullied by other people's opinions you know the other the other people's opinions are actually the thing that kind of pollute my perfect view of myself and so instead i'm just going to project outwards onto presumably the masses who are, whose opinions don't matter to me at all in this subjective judgment that I would have gained validation from in other times and places. Yeah, Hot, hotness as a concept is almost what pulls your platonic self-conception into the imperfect material world. Mm. And that's where everyone else sees you through the screen as a form of a form. Mm. Um, if we go into the next one, that paradox is perfectly encapsulated by this meme. <laughs> Which, I don't usually include memes in my segments, but isn't it just depressingly Sometimes true? Sometimes they're really good, though. Yes, and and particularly the Soy Woe Jacks were, yeah. yes. So, you could choose a life of fulfilling monogamy, or mm. you could prostitute yourself on the internet, and unfortunately, many women find their incomes dependent on wasted genetic potential being spurted all over keyboards. But this Hobson's choice of digitally prostituting yourself to unshaggable simps, or propagating the capitalist patriarchy through having things like a meaningful family, have driven many women to consider... Well, does beauty even exist at all? It seems to be impossible. Um, <laughs> yes, the thumbnails. That's a, great, that's a great title. Women can't be beautiful. Okay, well, check this me. one certainly can't. Mm. Um, the writer explains how she despises the maintenance of having to pluck her eyebrows, shave her eyes and uh, her arms and legs, etc. Um, she then goes on to conflate her disdain for these daily hygiene standards with the surgeries, augmentations and artificial projections of personality that Instagram influencers do. And she quotes one of your favourite people, funnily enough, in The Sexual Revolution, Laurie Penny writes, Today the ideal woman takes up as little space as possible. She is fragile, breakable, thin and hungry looking. But that's not what the ideal woman looks like in 2022. If they were, women would not be spending thousands of pounds for a big bum and non-zero chance of uh, embolism. And uh, Laurie Penny's quote is basically plagiarised from Gilbert and Gubar, who said that women kill themselves into this porcelain aesthetic, um, having the shadow, uh, the, the immobility of the dead as some sort of an incorruptible thing of being dainty mm. and frail. But then these days, obviously, the, the Instagram aesthetic, as you've covered the Instagram face, the dis disjointed body proportions mm. seem to be at odds at that. And those two paradoxes just explain that feminists trying to rationalise beauty standards as an, uh, a tool of the patriarchy to oppress women, if you're coming across these contradictory ideals that keep clashing against each other, then maybe it's you and maybe it's the women running fashion magazines that are distorting people's opinions. It's always, always been the case. I mean, look at uh, just, I'm, I'm just thinking of in my youth, 20 years ago, uh, who was on the cover of men's magazines and who was on the cover of women's magazines? And these were not the same women. Pamela Anderson was on the cover of the men's magazines, yeah. famous for being buxom, shall we say. Kate Moss is on the cover of the women's magazines, famous for being a beanpole. Right? The, the, these, there is a beauty standard that women 
find attractive for some reason or are interested in. And then there's what men like, which is big bums and boobs. Well, speaking of gigantic bums and boobs, <laughs> let's go on to the next link, it's shall we? It's not terribly complicated. It's not rocket science. You know? All bodies are beach bodies. Are you happy with these bums and boobs in this thumbnail? Well, no, because they're, they're meant to display uh, sort of fitness and ver um, fertility. Yes, but, well, they're certainly... Which, which these ones don't. No. Well, standing this close to the ocean, I'd be dodging the whaling spears personally. All bodies are beach bodies. I own Barrera, the leader of Podemos, who serves as a social rights minister in Spanish, in the Spain's socialist-led coalition government, said, All bodies are valid and we have the right to enjoy life as we are, without guilt or shame. Summer is for everyone. Antonila Molias, head of the Spain, Spanish Women's Institute, said, Diverse bodies, free of gender stereotypes, occupying all spaces. They can definitely occupy a lot of space those ones but summer also belongs to us free equal and diverse she tweeted on wednesday today we toast a summer for all without stereotypes and aesthetic violence against our bodies i would love to know what aesthetic violence is but i find this interesting we have the right to enjoy life as we are without guilt or shame okay so what you're saying because guilt guilt and shame are the result of social interactions with other people so you want to make sure that there's no consequence of social interactions and the only way you can do that and avoiding aesthetic violence presumably which I would have considered this to be a form of, um, is to have literally no social interactions at all, which is fulfilling what Rousseau was demanding in the social contract. I was about to say, it's it's Rousseau savage yes. in a society. Yes. But the problem is this does have negative externalities of if you're going to be happy in a fulfilled relationship, stop lying to women about their, their unlimited biological clock and stop lying to women that these are the beauty standards that will attract men. And we yeah. know they're lying to women because... Simone de Beauvoir, for example, said feminism is the accomplishment of smashing not only capitalism, but patriarchy and parenthood. And so they are trying to demolish the family. <laughs> Why is that good? <laughs> well, real socialism yeah. has never been tried. Let's do a matriarchal version uh, of it. Um, they'll at least be warm when they're digging ditches outside for the cause, because in the next one, armpit hair is coming back, whether or not you like it. How do you feel about armpit hair on, on women, Carl? I actually don't care about it, to be honest, because I've never been with a woman who's had armpit hair. This is the point. It's, I've never thought about it. It's it's never been a consideration that, that women would just, you know, take some pride in their appearance, do some basic hygiene. And it seems to me that most women don't like it themselves. No, no, they don't. But for some strange reason, this has been part of the feminist iconography to stick it to the man. Okay. And so have fun being sweaty, I guess. Um, this is also part of the aesthetic of feral girl summer. Have you oh. seen this? Oh, I have actually. Yeah. Uh, so apparently this is a TikTok trend and I don't go on that cesspit, but <clears throat> there's a story. Here. Picture yeah. the scene. It's 6am on a Sunday morning and a young woman is skipping down the street. She's wearing last night's clothes and a baseball cap. She found on the floor of a nightclub. Lou. She, her hair is sticky Gross. and she smells like cheap white wine. There is Red lipstick smudged across various parts of her mouth. She is young, wild, and horny as hell. Introducing okay. Feral Girl Summer. Authentic, messy, and liberated, the concept has been sold as the antithesis to its predecessor, Hot Girl Summer, coined by Megan the Stallion, who was actually uh, said the reclaiming of hotness was attributed to her from the first New York Times article. Right. The idea was that the summer of 2021 would be sexual bacchanalia, one characterized by a sense of reckless abandonment to make up for that lost time during lockdown, but because of vaccination um, coming too late and various restrictions, it didn't happen. The Feral Girl Summer is apparently, though, rooted in insoignance. I don't know what that means, but apparently it's about female autonomy, but fundamentally it's about not caring. And so that this article actually Brilliant. bemoans the fact that you're a bad feminist if you don't want armpit hair. So again, you've caught yourselves in this paradox here about yeah. how apparently abandoning all sense of propriety, aesthetics, hygiene <laughs> is pro-feminist, but at the same time, if women go, well, I don't want to be some sort of disheveled bear, then... I'm not a good feminist. So they're saying, oh, we've caught ourselves in this trap here about we really want to stick it to men, but we also want to be pretty for our own hotness validation. Mm. And so we've created this internal paradox of racing to the bottom of the barrel and standards, and we wonder why we aren't happy. But I, lo I love this. So like, look, to, to, to be like a, I don't know, a modern woman, you have to just go out and be a whore. Not even a whore. A whore's at least charged. Like, go... go a filthy, hairy... Yeah. Sticky, I wear clothes disgusting. from the bottom of a toilet whore. Yeah. And, and Aren't you empowered? <laughs> yeah, and engage in a sexual bacchanalia. It's like, oh, the, this is what women's empowerment looks like, does it? Because I tell you what, there, there are consequences to all of these things as the gay community is learning with monkeypox. Yeah. Like, sorry, if you think that this is just going to be like, oh, well, then nothing will happen. Nothing bad will happen to me because I do all of this stuff. You're wrong. But mm. go on, it's not my problem. Yeah, basically be a fleshlight dropped on a carpet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm so, not the one who's going to suffer for So that. the other side to this is also the Guardian. They're promoting something called oh, yeah. Goblin Mode. <laughs> 
Yeah, okay. Which is... I know the meme. I just... Well, the, this arc was just gold. At some point... Would you not want to be a goblin, Connor? Yeah, would you not like to be one of the Tolkien-esque villains? Connor, That's who I'd like to model with, with myself your, after. With your nice suit and your well-combed hair, become a goblin in a cave like this person. I just love someone commissioned this piece of art as well. <laughs> Like, like, do you not get the email through going, sorry, you want me to draw what? At some point in the stretch of days between the start of the pandemic's third year and the feared launch of World War Three, a new phrase has entered the zeitgeist, a mysterious harbinger of a new age to come. People were going goblin mode. The term embraces the comforts of depravity, spending the day in bed, <laughs> watching 90 Day Fiancé on mute while endlessly scrolling through social media, pouring the end of bag of crisps in your mouth, downing Eggo toaster waffles with hot sauce over the sink because you can't be bothered to put them in the plate, leaving the house in your pyjamas and socks to only get a single Diet Coke from the bodega these why are am i so depressed the- <laughs> i just can't understand where this depression has come from i'm just gonna go back to my hole <laughs> and eat my cheetos and watch more crap on netflix but this obviously like- comes from the laptop class who are yeah. imprisoned in high rises because they reference yeah. bodegas sitting in a pod and and yeah. the idea then they're trying to create some sort of mythical aesthetic around it as yeah. if it's like a child's game but as if this is a, a aspirational in any way it's just disgusting but this okay. is most university students as well yeah, genuinely yeah. so many women on my course did this and wondered why they were failing um goblin mode is like when you wake up at 2 a.m and shuffle into the kitchen wearing nothing but a long t-shirt to make a weird snack like melted cheese on saltines it's a complete lack of aesthetic because why would a cave goblin care what they look like first appearing on twitter as early as 2009 <laughs> goblin mode has been linked to some viral reddit posts of course it is claiming to secretly walk around her house like a goblin collecting trinkets and making goblin noises you know so you're ladies, a child you know what we can do we can aspire to be goblins in caves <laughs> This is feminism in 2022. Incredible. <laughs> so, so you can do it, ladies. I believe in you. <laughs> you too can be a filthy degenerate. So, um, strangely enough, there was a woman called Monique. I believe she's an Oscar-winning actress or something. Right. Um, and she went viral a little while ago. People were lambasting her for telling black women to not wear bonnets and <gasps> and bathrobes in public. And she came out with a sort of was framing, that wrong? Is it? <laughs> well, apparently so, because applying any standards to women, especially black women, yeah. is oppression. It's not like she said. Uh, she framed it in my babies. You divert deserve more than this show your best selves she explained <laughs> we don't she, have best selves we're going goblin mode what are you talking about <laughs> what century are you from <laughs> we're marching on helms deep in 10 minutes <laughs> i need my shower cap um she explained she had seen during her travels um i've mostly seen it at the airport i've been seeing it at the store at the mall um <laughs> when did we lose our pride in representing ourselves when we did we slip away and let me make sure i'm not presentable when leaving home and this actually reminded me of when you did with callum the footage of british people from the 20s right through to the 90s mm. of where people were wearing suits even people in lower class yeah they put on their 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 sunday best essentially every single day you and they made not. the journey to work and then now i suppose with the the rate of practical materials becoming widely available and fast fashion and that but also the complete slip of standards is Logically, now people are looking shambolic coming out of their house, and it's yes. utterly embarrassing. So, I just wanted to go on to the last one, which is the Evie article on why women's magazines lied to women about the sexual revolution, mm. to show you that all of these press outlets, all of these abolition of beauty standards, are a concerted effort to make you utterly miserable. Um, there's a woman's confessions in here, I won't read at length, but she actually said that. A lot of the time, the women that said you needed to decouple yourself from the cares of marriage to become a career woman, you need to have promiscuous sex, they told you about where you could get contraception, etc., was to demolish the family purposefully. But the women that wrote this were very much like Betty Friedan as to where they could philosophize this about all they want, but they actually had a loving husband and family. Yeah. And so it was at the expense of you that they made not only their money, but they cemented their their place in the journo class. They're kind of pulling up the ladder, aren't they? Exactly. Yeah. And this is this is very much a sort of privilege of, of the attractive women who can talk their way into these boardrooms to then level the social hierarchy and ensure that there's no competition yes. for all the rest of the men. The it younger is, women, more beautiful as they age, aren't going to be able to get up on that ladder. Exactly. Yeah, it's a lot of the clever. time, well, most female bullying happens online between other women, and so oh, are yeah. we shocked that this happens. Um, there was also the fact that this writer said that she got an abortion because she'd been told to and she's regretted it ever since and so she went back on her word about this um so pop culture tells women that excitement should be the focus of life and that sex for sex sake is what fun and exciting people do but in the end it's a solid foundation of a functional loving marriage which is the most enriching experience that a woman should aim to experience for herself now obviously we at the lotus Caesars like to uphold female beauty standards because we enjoy having a nice woman to come home to uh and also it's just quite nice to see people living fulfilled and happy lives and so for our growing female viewership i'd like to suggest for 
example, reading Evie as an accompaniment to, to our articles on the site, as well as Carl's upcoming stuff. Mm. For example, why I wore a dress every day for a month and it changed my life. We should rediscover some feminine aesthetics because it might actually make women happier, might make men happier, God forbid, and it might lead you to have a, a better fulfilling life. And this segment is endorsed by my own girlfriend, so I think we're doing all right there. Just as a quick thing, how, why, why did wearing the dress change her life dramatically? Uh, because it it allowed her to have a bit more of a feminine aesthetic and she leaned into that and she felt, yeah. quote unquote, empowered, but not in her imitation of a man in the corporate world. It was Right, so it she was, was leaning into the female archetype. Exactly, it was that's freeing. That's fascinating, because that's actually something I'll be talking about in the article, uh, that there is power in, in femininity and it's in the way that men react to it. And that seems to be what she's discovering there then. Well... I remember a quote is that um, feminine rejection is like a Medusa's stare to even the even the steel heartedness of man. So we like these standards, but mm. we also understand there's immense power in them because they're our driving force for doing a lot of the work we do. Mm. And most This is why you see the collapse of relationships has led to lots of men sitting in their bedrooms and just playing video games the rest of their lives being utterly aimless. Yeah. It's, it's, the, yeah, men don't do anything if women don't make demands of them. Yeah, and it's, it's the old Dave Chappelle quote of chivalry is dead and women killed it. Mm. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as this premium video by Carl on Nietzsche's critique of critical race theory. If you want to follow what else he's putting out, you can follow him on Getter at at Carl Benjamin on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.